uh, it's good to see all of you here today. It's a bright, sunny day. For the most part, bright, sunny faces. <laughs> Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your great love for us. That while we were yet sinners, you sent Christ to die for us. While we were enemies, while we had no interest in you whatsoever, you had love for us and acted first and reached out. Thank you so much for that. And I pray that today our songs, our offerings, our prayers, the attitudes of our heart would be pleasing to you. Amen. We're all glad you're here today. Would you stand with us as we worship and turn our hearts towards God? your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My dead to pay from the cross to the grave. so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My dead to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high.
mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath and living water, such a marvelous mystery. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was in God's people said. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, everybody. Nice to have you here. We appreciate every one of you for, in God's name. We gather on Sunday morning to worship him and to leave ourselves behind. I'm going to uh, read some of the welcome uh, announcements today. And one of them is that the July 17th picnic, July 17th at Cary Lake, usually starts about 11 or 12, but it'll be in the bulletin. You have it in your bulletin today. Corey Anderson is and or will be in the foyer after service and she has a lot of artifacts and stories to tell about her trip uh, into the Pacific Ocean <laughs> out that way. <laughs> We're going to show a little skip now. I'm Jack Ryla from Big Fork, Minnesota. My family came to northern Minnesota uh, in the early 1900s. This was all forest land up here, and it was heavily populated with these pine stands uh, that had never seen an axe uh, before, and of course this was, this was music to the lumberman's ear. The picture in that forest was one of these vast logging camp operations where in a matter of just a few decades, this hundreds of thousands of acres were being harvested to supply these hungry mills. And it took lots of manpower because there was no mechanization in those days. It was all by a crosscut saw and axe. When they talk about the Wild West, well, this the wild north was just as wild. The revelry at the bars and, and the fights on the streets and, and such as it was, it was, a, it was a wild time. Into that world that young John Sornberger moved going to the camps. He was a tremendously good prize fighter, but is often happens with the wonderful athletes. They, there's always somebody bigger and better just down around the corner and that's what happened to John. He ended up robbing a tavern or two and before he knew it he was on the run from the lot. Then one day he met up with Frank Higgins, the first of the Sky Pilots. 
God's grace and the, and, the, and the good spirit of the governor of Minnesota at that time, he was pardoned from all this, these indictments and these charges were against him. Well, I believe this story is so important here so many years afterwards. Is that the history of the lumberjack and the logging camps is one that's been long forgotten. surface of these tough men being totally melted by the love that John Sornberger, this ex-prize fighter outlaw, was able to exhibit. Just a little bit more on the announcements. I think I should read the names of those that are fighting with cancer so we can all get it in our heads here today and be sure that we pray for them. We're praying for Robbie Fanberg, Joyce Daig, Chris Sandy Taylor Nornberg, Mary Mackey, Dave Mansky, Roger, Diane Wickstrom. I don't know who Roger is. And then there's a list of people for that are looking and getting health and healing. John Edwards, Olivia Carlson, Millie Finney, uh, Shirley Sonneberg, Joyce Nelson, Chuck Yost, Earl Sonneberg, Bob Clemens, Lowell Knowles, Scott Smith, Mike McClafferty, Dave Nelson, and Bjorn Smith. And uh, Think of Doris Clancher, she's homebound and needs our prayers. Right now I'm going to uh, introduce our speaker today. And he's just going to give you a little five minute deal on this and the books that are in the foyer that are there for you if you'd like to have one. And I think it's, it's in your bulletin, but I think it's so so great that I want to read it. We wish to extend a warm welcome to our guest speaker Dwight Solberg and his wife and his wife Betty. Dwight served in the United States Navy during the Korean conflict, attended the graduation and Jack graduated from UMD. He's the owner and co-founder of a restaurant called Sweden House International. He also developed a fish and chips restaurant called Number 10 Downing Street. He retired after serving 10 years at the Silver Bay Veterans Home as a chaplain. Thank you for sharing what the Lord has laid on your heart. I'm thankful I'm here today. I don't know if the, uh, your pastor had, had mentioned to you that 
I'd been praying one day. I haven't spoken in a church for a while, and so I said, Lord, I'd like to speak in a church again. And here I am. Your pastor called me the next day. He, he didn't know that. And I'm here. I just want to say a little bit about the movie. Uh, Jack is a, is a dear friend in Christ. He's been through a, a lot of turmoil in, in the last few years. But he loves the Lord. <clears throat> All the people who are, have uh, actually it just began really come together in January of this year. I have a friend, and God does a lot through what you call networking. And uh, I had a friend named Jeremiah, and he uh, had called First Presbyterian Church in Duluth. And he said, uh, do you know if uh, The Last of the Giants has a copyright on it? And uh, Margaret there said, well, call Dwight Solberg, and he can tell you. He called me, and I told him there was no copyright. And so the uh, I was going to have a copy up here, but my wife has some books that the uh, I've been authorized to be able to sell. They're 1990 or 1595, and uh, you can purchase them today for four, uh, ten dollars. But uh, the greatest thing is that what has happened with the movie it's coming together in January uh, a friend uh, had a friend he said he's a uh, movie producer and uh, he came and, and spent a week with us here in uh, Grand Rapids and I just spoke with him last night and he was telling me how he went down to uh, took the book down and he met with some other producers of movies uh, and uh, they read the book and they said this book is tremendous it's going to be a great book and what it really is is telling the story about a man by the name of John Sornberger his beginning was not good he ran through Grand Rapids with a gang of guys that just would go into taverns and turn them upside down. And if they wanted to drink, they would uh, pick on a guy and turn him upside down, take all his money, and then everybody drank. Drinks were on the house. And it was this lawlessness began to go from uh, from bad to worse. And finally, uh, every sheriff in the county was looking for him. He, up in Bemidji, he had uh, got hold of the... Uh, he had ta- taken captive by the sheriff there, and he uh, locked the sheriff in the in his own jail and got away. But there's a, it's a tremendous story about a man who was lost, but then he found Christ. Once he was in darkness, and then he came to know Christ. And what a, what a transition it was. And that's what the movie is going to be about. And we believe that it'll be in every, because of the drama, it'll be in every movie theater throughout the United States. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. Ushers, will you come forward, please? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you with all our hearts, with all our strength, with all our mind. We thank you for the sunshine, and we thank you for the rain. We thank you for the good times, and we thank you for the bad times. Behind it all is the greatest God, the only God, Jehovah. We love you and we thank you for what's going to be done here today. And we thank you for the offering that's uh, going to be given in your name. And we thank each and every person that participates 
in our church and in our offerings. Bless this congregation. Bless Dwight Solenberg as he speaks today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Don't you have somebody get me a glass of water?
thy grace draw near and bless your name. It's always a privilege to, to read God's Word. It's a message from heaven. And I'm reading this morning from 1 Corinthians 18 through verse 25. Hear the Word of the Lord. <clears throat> For the message of the cross is foolishness, to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom, the intelligent of an intelligent, I will frustrate. Where is the wise man? Where is the scholar? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world through his, its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness that was preached to save those who believe. The Jews demanded miracles and signs. Greeks looked for wisdom. But we preach Christ. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than man's strength. May God add his blessing to the reading of his most holy word. I've handed out these sheets. I don't know if Pastor Kevin knew that I was going to do this. I can't remember if I told him. <clears throat> but I have to know how things work. And so I came up with this through the Lord, he created it with me, gave me the ideas.
And as we look at the sheet, I'll turn back to what happened in the Garden of Eden. There was a person, his name is Satan. Have you ever heard of him? He said at one time, I'm going to ascend to heaven and I'm going to be like the Most High. And what happened to him? God threw him out of heaven. But he allowed him to come to this earth. And it's interesting to know that later on in the scriptures when uh, after the, the rapture there's a thousand year reign that God is going to let him loose again. And what it is is that God, Satan tries each one of us every day. But he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. And that's a fact that we should not forget as we begin to wrestle with him. Now, one of the great things is that God created man in his own image. And what does that mean? He created man with a, a body, a soul, and a spirit. He put a spirit in man. He formed man from the dust of the earth and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. Located in our soul is our, that's where our life mechanism is. Embedded in that is our mind, emotion, and our will. Our mind is a wonderful thing, isn't it? The Bible instructs us, let this mind be in you that is in Christ Jesus. My mother used to tell me, that sin will keep you from God's word, or God's word will keep you from sin. And so we look at what happened in the Garden of Eden. God threw Satan out of heaven, and where they went a third of the angels. And he came, he was uh, like a snake, only at that time I think the snake walked upright. After God had created us in his image, then he uh, made male and female, and God blessed them and said, be fruitful and increase. So what happened? Well, in creation, we see we've, the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the book of Revelation 22, we again see God. This time we see him in the new heaven, in the new earth. There'll be no more sickness, no more pain, no more lying, no more cheating. And this is the kind of world that Adam and Eve grew up in. And God gave them one simple thing to do. Adam and Eve, trust me. And he told them if he would eat from the tree in the middle of the garden, They could eat of all the trees, but there is one, the tree of good and evil. And that's when their eyes would be open to sin. That's what God wanted to keep them from. But because of Satan, they listened to him. So God created man in his image with a body, a soul, and a spirit. You notice 
I've written a heart between the, the uh, soul and the spirit. The prophet, or Solomon, wrote this in Proverbs 4.23. Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. the wellspring of life. We have to guard our heart. Let's go back to the fall. What happened then? Sin came into the world. Adam and Eve went and hung, hid in the garden. And God had to come looking for them. He asked them, what happened? And Eve said, the fruit of the tree, tree was good for food and pleasing to my eye. And it was also desirable for gaining wisdom. This is what the, Satan told her. So she took of, of it, gave some to her husband, and he ate it. And their eyes were opened. They realized that they were naked. Then God, they sowed fig leaves to cover them up. And then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the trees. Up to this time, they had complete fellowship with him. And now that fellowship was broken. And the man called to, God called to the man, where are you? He answered, God, I heard you in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And then God said to him, who told you that you're naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? And here's an interesting thing. The man said, the woman made me do it. Isn't that like a, a man? The woman made me do it. She made me, gave me some of that fruit and I ate. And then the Lord asked the woman, she said, well, the servant deceived me and I ate. So the Lord God said to the servant, because you have done this, cursed are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals, and you will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity or strife between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. And you know, talking about the offspring, he's going to crush your head. Jesus is going to crush his head when he died on the cross for man's sin. And then he laid out all the, when you have a baby now, there will be childbirth, there will be pain in it, and so on. But skipping over to uh, Genesis 3, 21. Then Lord made a garment of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. The Lord God said, The now, man now has become like one of us, knowing good and evil. And this is what God wanted to protect Adam and Eve from. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. There in the garden, was a tree called the tree of life, which I believe in the future, thousands of years later, would become the cross of Jesus Christ. So the Lord banished them from the garden. He drove men out. He placed on the east side of the garden of Eden 
cherubims with flaming swords flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. That tree, thousands of years later, would be the cross that Jesus Christ died on. I'd like to tell a short story about this happened in 2012. I had a friend who asked me if I would meet with a young man who was going to meet, marry her, her uh, daughter. His name is Greg. This began in the latter part of 2012, in June, the latter week. And he would come, and I, we would meet in the restaurant, and, and of course I used the sheet as a backdrop. And I talked with him for about oh, three Sundays that he would come. And one Sunday, he was, uh, we would meet at 9 o'clock, and one Sunday he didn't show up. And then he showed up at 9.30 and he said, I woke up and I, I overslept. But I told my friends I was going to a Bible study and he said, you're going to what? I'm going to a Bible study. And we spent about four weeks going through the scriptures. I went away, Betty and I went away on a weekend, the last uh, Sunday of July of that year. And we came back on Monday night, and if any of you know, uh, work for the airline, you fly space available. And that's what we have the uh, right to do. And we couldn't get on the plane to Duluth. And I called Marge, the lady who introduced me, and wanted to meet me to meet with it, Greg. And she said, did you hear the news? And I said, no, we haven't heard any news. Greg was killed last night. Many of you know where Betty spies on Highway 61. Well, there's a road that comes back. It's the back way to, uh, we always say, the back way to two harbors, County Road 3. And apparently he came down that road. A squall came up. He must have lost direction. And he crossed 61 and he hit a big tree right head on and he was killed instantly. Some friends went down. <clears throat> he was the uh, manager of the parts store in uh, Silver Bay. And they went down and they, one of the fellows who was working there said, look what Greg was working on. You know, it was a cross. And so I, I was asked to, uh, to lead in the memorial service. Over 600 people came. They filled the reunion hall. People were standing all over. 
and I held up the cross. What does a cross mean to you? To Greg, it meant everything. And I know today where Greg is. He was, we just heard, heard uh, this last week that he he was leading a Bible study with some friends. He was new in the faith, and yet he was bringing his friends, and he wanted them to hear about Christ, his death on the cross. I think so many times we take the cross of Jesus for granted. We do not realize that the pain and the suffering that he went through. In the Apostles' Creed, it says that he descended into hell. Do you know what happened then? He took your sin and mine with him down there, and he deposited them in hell. Well, down there, he was, I'm sure he was attacked by satanic beings. just for you and me, for your sin and my sin. The cross of Jesus Christ. The cross of Jesus Christ. Jesus deposited those sins in hell. The past, present, and future sins and now we have what 1 John 1, 9. When we sin, all we have to do is, if we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I remember <clears throat> I was a young believer at the time, and and I took the Lord's name in vain. And it struck me in the heart. And I felt so bad. What I had said. I confessed it right away to the Lord. What does a cross mean to you this morning? I remember this past week as I was uh, just going over the cross. It broke my heart. And when you meditate on the cross, what does it do to you? Are you grateful for what he's done? I'd like to stand up and sing, I'll hail the power of Jesus' name. I don't know what the closing song is, but let's come there. And as we sing this, whatever the closing song is, is there one? Okay. Why don't we sing that together and praise the Father for what he has done on the cross for you and I.
not wait for me to cry out to you, but you let me hear your voice calling me, and I'm forever grateful to you. I'm forever grateful for the cross. I'm forever grateful to you. But you clothed yourself with frail humanity. You did not wait for me to cry out to you. But you let me hear your voice calling me. And I'm forever grateful to you. And I'm forever grateful for the cross.